Hello friends, my name is Maddie Ness and I had a really busy work month. It is the end of the school year and I'm an HR manager for seven schools. So <laughs> uh, I somehow managed to still read five books this month. So I wanted to tell you guys about them. First is The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green. I actually listened to this on audiobook. I received a copy through Libro FM's ALC program. This is a collection of essays based on Green's podcast. And essentially the premise is that he takes some facet of human life or human invention and he reviews it on a five-star scale and in these essays he brings you that piece of human experience and he gives a little bit of history but he also ties it to personal experience and personal stories. I discovered John Green's books right as I was aging out of them so it was really interesting to see him take on something different in nonfiction, but also something that was more geared towards adults. I think regardless of where you land on his fiction most people can agree that he is a gifted storyteller and he brings that flair to the essays. There were so many reflections here on art, on literature, on the pandemic, on his relationship with his family and his brother that just really hit home and I was as interested in the big picture things that he was presented as I was in those personal stories. The audiobook read by Green was a treat and just immediately I was in my feelings especially as he balances like more hopeful things and like the wonder of people of the things that we do and the darker side of like the impact that we have on the world and the difficulty of the last year. I don't frequently listen to the podcast so I'm not sure how similar this is or how much you will gain from this if you are a regular listener but to me just kind of coming in with very little background knowledge this was absolutely a treat and I gave it five out of five stars. Next I read another nonfiction, Somebody's Daughter by Ashley C. Ford. I also listened to this thanks to Libro FM's ALC program. I would call this a coming of age memoir and it is a lot about Ford's relationship with her mother and father but also with her grandmother who helped raise her and her siblings as well. The best way that I can describe this is vulnerable. There was something just heartbreakingly real and honest about the way that Ford communicated her experiences and more than that the way that she tied it to the person that she is today. While she was growing up Ford's father was in prison and he had a long jail sentence so she talks a lot about her relationship with him and how that impacted her growing up experience but we also see what it means when he leaves jail as she's an adult. When I finished this the one thing that I thought was a bit of a weakness in this was some of the simplicity in the language and storytelling but the more that I reflected on it the more impressed I was with how Ford managed to tell what is a complex story. It is the story of a life lived with that sort of simplicity so that I found myself relating to things that weren't necessarily directly my experience but that were told in such an open and human way that I was finding things that I could use as touchstones but I was also very much put in her shoes as she was expressing her ideas. Overall I gave this 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next I read Fugitive Telemetry by Martha Wells. I borrowed this as an audiobook from my local library and I've read the entire Murderbot Diaries this year. I think I started reading them in January or February so I've just been steadily making my way through and absolutely falling in love. In general I think that this is very much a series that is greater than the sum of its parts. I always give the novellas and even the full-length novels somewhere between three and four stars but when I think about the Murderbot Diaries as a whole like I'm deeply in love especially with the character of Murderbot. In Fugitive Telemetry I feel like there are the same sort of weaknesses that I find in all of them and primarily that is that we have so many supporting characters that I tend to lose track of them and they feel a little interchangeable and flat to me especially considering how well-defined Murderbot is as a character. This one was especially fun however because Murderbot is solving a murder. So you have the mystery element of it and Murderbot's snark is like all the way dialed up to 10 so all of my favorite pieces of the story were here in addition to this like murder mystery sort of thing. I know that this one just came out but I'm already like when can we have more and I frequently think about rereading through the series that's how much fun I have when I'm reading them so I gave this one four out of five stars. Next I read Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully. This is is a YA mystery about a teen girl who at the start of this book even before we join actually the events of the story has experienced a, a string of tragedies. So she's kind of put her life on hold. She's helping her mother take care of her grandmother. Her uncle has recently died and as we start the story she also witnesses a very tragic event that gets her pulled into sort of the larger mystery of what is going on in their community and she takes on some very big risks in working with the FBI to uncover
uncover what is going on. I really, really enjoyed this. I think that I do consider this a YA mystery, but the mystery is incredibly slow burn to me. I think that if you go in this expecting sort of a page turner mystery, it's not quite there. But what does make this a page turner is the very layered storytelling. You are exploring so many different things through Donis's point of view, including her grief, her culture, her language, her identity, her connections to her native identity, some of the racism that she faces, especially being biracial. There's just so much richness going on here. I saw a few reviews calling this a lot, and it is true that Donis goes through a lot and that this is a story packed full, but I think that's rather dismissive of the fact that this is rooted in real experiences. Donis does have a flat arc. She is a character who I don't know that we see too many of her flaws as a person. She loves sports and she loves science. She jumps into this investigation and she's rather good at it. She's exploring a lot of different things, but we don't really necessarily see an arc for her. It is a flat arc and I love that so much. First of all, because I love a well done flat arc, but secondly, because I think it was really inspired to put this sort of character and this sort of arc in a story that is juggling so many different things and that does have some of these darker tones in terms of what her community is facing. Bully is really careful to weave in hope and optimism into her story and I cried multiple times while reading this and mostly because of the connections that Donis has with her family, with the Ojibwe elders, with the reservation and the ways that we see them coming through for each other even in the toughest circumstances. Again this is just so rich in Ojibwe culture and tradition and language and and I, I haven't stopped thinking about this since I put it down. I think that there has been a fair amount of buzz for this and I think it's completely earned. I gave this four and a half out of five stars. And finally, I read People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. This is adult romance in which two best friends go on a summer trip each year. So we are flashing back to previous summer trips that they have gone on and then we kind of have a break in time where we know something happened on their most recent summer trip that broke sort of the relationship and they hadn't talked in two years but the main character Poppy is feeling a little stuck and uninspired in her life and she thinks back to the last time she was happy and it was on vacation with her best friend Alex so she tries her best to sort of rekindle the friendship and to get him to go on another trip and then we see them sort of unpacking what their relationship relationship is and what they want it to be. I was somebody who absolutely loved Beach Read and I think part of the reason that I loved it so much is a lot of what I hear criticisms about that book and it is because it did something a little bit different. There were these darker tones and tropes that are things that you don't necessarily think of when you think of like rom-coms or romances in general. I loved Henry's writing and her prose style and I just thought that the main character was so witty and I loved her outlook even as she was going through some of these darker things. So needless to say I had really high expectations for this book and it was enjoyable while I was reading it but as soon as I put it down and started reflecting and as we talked about it on the live show for How Salt this month I just realized that it, it isn't I don't think it's going to be that memorable. I think that it didn't do anything new and fresh which is kind of what I was expecting but more than that it took every opportunity it could to hit on as many tropes as possible and it sort of hit them square in the face so that it became something that felt a little cheesy and sometimes a little bit forced as we were pushing our characters in these situations and it felt like just for the sake of the trope than for naturally following the story progression. I liked the characters and I liked them together but again they won't be super memorable to me. The beginning was especially difficult for me to get through because I felt like the character introductions and the introduction to the premise was especially clunky and cheesy. I was cringing. All of the supporting characters were really really flat to me and the way that they showed up just to add a little bit of tension or just like share some wisdom was again it just all felt a little cheesy but it is really readable. It will go down smooth especially on the beach, by the pool, or on a plane. I gave this one 3.5 out of 5 stars. That's it for me today. If you have read or would like to read any of the books that I've mentioned let's chat down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. I'm sorry I've been away. I'm over on TikTok <laughs> making 60 second videos because they're so much easier to squeeze into my schedule but hopefully as the end of the school year kind of winds down I'll be back. I always say this. I feel like I say this in every video but uh yeah. I mean it in every video. <laughs>